Hi, my name is James Shannon. I'm a strategic account manager at BioConnect. And today I'd like to talk to you about facial recognition and where we've seen growth in the last few years. For us, facial recognition has grown significantly over the last couple years, and we see two major reasons why. The first reason is because of Apple. Apple we see as probably the best and biggest salesperson of biometrics on the planet today. When they first released their iPhone 5S in 2013, that was the first widespread commercial use of biometrics in the marketplace. We saw uh, users become more comfortable with the use of biometrics, but it was focused on the fingerprint because that's what they were used to getting into their cellular devices. The same thing has happened when Apple released their iPhone 10 last year. Suddenly people are more comfortable with using facial biometrics to access their cell phones. And that has a trickle down effect into commercial banking and financial applications, which is where we come in. The second reason is that facial recognition, the technology has improved significantly over the last few years. People can reliably use their faces to access doors. The enrollment time has come down dramatically and also the cost of deploying facial biometrics has reduced significantly. All of these factors contribute to companies now being more warm to adopting facial biometrics. At BioConnect, we typically see customers interested in facial recognition for a number of use cases. If it's a commercial type use case, so an office building or similar, um, we typically see it being deployed on executive level doors or high profile doors. The reason being that the executives really like that touchless experience of being able to access their spaces. In fact, touchless biometrics is often how facial recognition is referred to because it allows people to not have to use their hands, their cards, or even their fingerprints to access a door. The second way uh, we see facial recognition being used is to improve the overall look and feel of an area. For example, in a data center application, we have many customers who will choose to do facial recognition in a lobby area because that's the first place a customer sees when they access your building. Having a futuristic look and feel in a lobby area at a data center is a huge selling point uh, for their customers. Today's facial recognition uses a combination of depth and unique characteristics between your eyes, face, mouth, and cheekbones to form a template of what your face should look like. During the enrollment process for our facial recognition solution, you're actually asked to present your face at multiple different angles and depths so that you can uh, have a more complete data set for what your face looks like. That data is combined into what's called a biometric template. The facial recognition solution from Suprema stores 25 different templates of your face locally at the device for matching. The reason there's 25 is to increase the number of data points that you can match against for accuracy and speed. What's interesting though, is that five of those templates are dynamic, meaning that every time you use the device or authenticate, those templates are actually updating. As you use the device over time, your face might actually change. You might grow a beard, you're, you might put on weight, your face might change. The device is actually updating those templates based on how your face changes. It's a dynamic learning algorithm that really sets Supreme apart. So as facial recognition becomes more commonplace in the market through Apple and through commercial applications, we expect the technology to continue to improve. If you'd like to learn more about facial recognition, please click the link below or visit our website at bioconnect.com. Thanks so much for listening.